As Streets of New Capenna races to a local game store near you, remember, this pre-release is worth attending, Draft is supposed to be an incredible and exciting experience, and Standard, well, the Draft is supposed to be good, but if, like me, you play Commander, then you're probably wondering, how many packs of New Capenna should I buy? Don't! Packs are for draft. If you are looking for specific cards for Commander, the best use of your money is buying the individual cards you need for the decks that you want to play. Presented here are the best new cards for Commander from New Capenna. Not as Commander, but in the Commander decks. If you love a Legendary, build that deck. But what actually goes in it besides your Commander? Well, we're gonna talk about which cards from this set really really are the pickups that you want to make for your commander decks. Don't buy packs of new Capenna, that's for draft, but buy these five cards plus a few honorable mentions instead. But first, a quick word about this video. This video is brought to you by Keeps, a subscription hair loss prevention medication. First, before I even get into that, do you notice I currently have a beard? The reason I currently have a beard is that I have not been shaving. And when I don't shave, hair grows on this part of my body. Some people say I look good with a beard, and I think they're right, but I personally prefer to be clean shaven. And so, since hair grows here, even though I prefer to be clean shaven, I'm gonna take a razor, which I use as a tool, and I'm going to shave off this beard so that I can look the way I want to look. There's no right or wrong to whether I have this beard or not. It's simply that my body is doing something and I can take control of how I wish to present myself. And that's what I think about when I think about keeps. Because there's nothing wrong with being bald or balding, but some people who are balding do not wish to be so. And Keeps is a hair loss prevention medication that you can use as a tool, much as I will use my shaving razor, to look and present yourself the way you want to look and be perceived. Keeps is just medicine. It's the generic versions of the only two FDA approved hair loss products out there. And since this is that generic version of name brand medication, you're getting it at a huge savings. Keeps will actually let you meet with a doctor online and get everything delivered to your door. That makes it safe, secure, and especially easy. No awkward doctor visits, no having to leave your house. And you know, the best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still have hair. And again, I am sexy with or without my beard, with or without my hair, and so are you. But if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com forward slash Tolarian or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Tolarian. Thank you, Keeps, for sponsoring this video. All right, before I even get to the honorable mention, I have to get something out of the way, and that's the Tricycle Lands. The five new three-color lands are obviously the best cards for Commander from the Streets of New Capenna, but I'm not wasting a slot on these. That's boring, but they're great! Each has three basic land types, making them easily fetchable, and they all have cycling, which, while not a huge draw, does provide them with some extra late-game utility. And I don't mean to say they're boring, I actually think these are really well-designed lands and are going to be really helpful for a lot of Commander decks. But I want to talk about, you know, spells, or at least lands that are serving a purpose other than mana. I actually really love how Wizards has been better about finishing the rare land cycles they start lately. Hey, maybe one day we'll see the enemy colored Tango lands. And I don't mean to diminish these by kind of brushing them out of the way before we begin, but I guess that's exactly what I'm doing. But in the meantime, let's talk true honorable mention. I want to use this slot to recognize a very useful piece of tech that while not playable in every deck, should certainly find a home in many of the decks that can run it, and that is Void Rend, an instant for a white, a blue, and a black that can destroy target non-land permanent, but wait, it gets better. Void Rend is uncounterable. Three mana seems to be the going rate for instant speed removal that can target almost anything. Yes, yes, I'm aware of Assassin's Trophy. And Void Rend is a welcome addition to the ranks of Beast Within, Chaos Warp, and Mythos of Nithroi. Sure, you're probably gonna run Generous Gift and Anguished Unmaking over this, but Void Rend is excellent in that third targeted removal slot. Don't discount that uncounterable clause either. The last thing you want is to try to remove an opponent's combo piece 
only to be told no. That's the reason cards like Kroos and Grip and Dovin's Veto are so useful. It's because they're difficult to stop, if not impossible. Void Rend may not be the pinnacle of the targeted removal genre, but it's pretty darn close and certainly deserves this spot as an honorable mention. Kickstarting our list proper is my number five pick. An offer you can't refuse. So tell me, what is it that you want? How about countering a non-creature spell for only one blue mana? Isn't that swell? An offer you can't refuse is fantastic. Sure, you gotta give your opponent two treasure tokens as compensation for their loss, but isn't that better than being expropriated or having to deal with all your muscle getting caught up in some cyclonic rift? In a world with an ever-growing number of free counter spells, it's nice to see one that, while cheap, has some downsides. Side. An offer you can't refuse reminds me a lot of Swan Song, another counter spell for one blue mana that sees an enormous amount of play. Unlike Swan Song, however, an offer you can't refuse can hit artifacts and planeswalkers. Oh, you want a soul ring, do you? Be a shame if that extra two mana every turn became two extra mana only once, wouldn't it? Yes, yes, two treasure tokens are far more dangerous in your opponent's hands than some bird, but they seem like just the thing to keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Sure beats Sleeping with the Fishes. Wait, I think I was thinking of Walk the Plank. Is Sleeping with the Fishes a card? No? Thank goodness. Coming in at number four, we have Cabaretti Ascendancy. For a red, a green, and a white, we get an enchantment that reads, at the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. If it's a creature or planeswalker card, you may reveal it and put it into your hand. If you don't put the card into your hand, you may put it on the bottom of your library. This is a must play in any creature heavy deck in these colors. An extra card or a free scry every single turn is nothing to turn your nose up at, particularly at three mana. At Lapolini, Nest Tender, Gishoth, Sun's Avatar, and Asika, God of the Tree, are all going to love this card. Even decks with commanders that don't care about what's on top of your library are going to find Cabaretti Ascendancy useful. The color identity is certainly a limitation, which is why Cabaretti Ascendancy is only number four. But I think it is the most powerful of the Ascendancies from Street of New Capenna, and while there are others of the five that I like, Cabaretti is the one I think is a must pick up. Coming in at number three is another addition to the canon of white card draw. Oh my goodness, they're sure overdoing it, aren't they? Well, here we have Rumor Gatherer. For one generic and two white mana, we get a 2-1 elf wizard that reads, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, scry one. If this is the second time this ability is resolved this turn, draw a card instead. This is definitely going to be a staple in any token-based strategy from go-wide aristocrats to even just some basic elf goodness. Now, the card draw ability only resolves once per turn, but you do get to keep on scrying after that, which is pretty nifty. The key to this card is going to be triggering it on your opponent's turns as well as your own. Call the Coppercoats, Secure the Wastes, and White Sun Zenith are obvious inclusions, but why not add some extra utility? Entrapment Maneuver forces an opponent to sacrifice an attacking creature while making us tokens, and Release to Memory exiles a graveyard and grants us a token for each creature exiled this way. Some repeatable token generation is probably a good idea too. Oketra the True, Prava of the Steel Legion, and Heliod, God of the Sun, can all be activated at instant speed to create creature tokens multiple times per turn, even if the price is a little steep. Finally, two format staples in the form of Vidalkin Ori and Anointed Procession will, of course, be excellent in combination with Rumor Gatherer. So yet again, like with those cards, we've got another odd include. Ah, oh, dear. As per usual, there are some hoops to jump through to get card drawn white, but with Rumor Gatherer, those hoops are probably ones you'll be jumping through anyway. So what are the two best cards to pick up for Commander from Streets of New Capenna? In our number two slot, we have what is sure to be a white staple from now until the rules committee decides it needs to be banned. Halo Fountain. You say goodbye, I say halo. Halo, halo. Yeah, I was actually more of a golden eye fan, but Halo Fountain is the real deal. Token generation, card draw, and an alternate win condition on a three mana artifact. Whoa there, buddy. Is there anything you don't do? For two and a white, Halo Fountain is an artifact with three abilities. The first reads, pay a white, tap Halo Fountain, and untap a tapped creature you control. 
control. Create a 1-1 one, one green and white citizen creature token. The second part reads, pay two white mana, tap Halo Fountain, and untap two white creatures you control. Draw a card. The third and final ability reads, pay five white mana, tap Halo Fountain, and untap 15 tapped creatures you control. You win the game. Is it just me or does that final ability seem a bit, well, easy to achieve? Look, this obviously goes in every white deck with a heavy token theme, but also just any white deck with a heavy creature theme. You don't need to be in token generation to have a lot of white weenies on the board. Weenies is what white does. And even if you're not in a deck like that, I don't see why a white deck wouldn't want to run this. Two mana to draw a card isn't that pricey, especially when it's repeatable and abusable with cards like Voltaic Construct, Voltaic Servant, and of course Voltaic Key. All the Voltaics. Look, if it says Voltaic in the name, it's gonna be good here. In all honesty, it should probably be number one, but I have a feeling it is rarely going to resolve. And even when it does, unless it is poised to win the game instantly, it will draw so much hate you won't be able to activate it more than once. And yet, Halo Fountain is powerful, ridiculously so. And so if it's not in our top slot, then it's definitely second to only one. And what is that one? Well, if not Halo Fountain, then the number one pick from Streets of New Cabana for Commander is Vivian on the Hunt. Hey, it's a Planeswalker for Commander. Uh-oh. Vivian is a legendary Planeswalker. Wait a minute, aren't all Planeswalkers legendary? Is that redundant to say legendary Planeswalker? Could there be a non-legendary Planeswalker? Anyway, for four generic and two green mana, she comes in with three three loyalty abilities. The plus one ability allows us to mill five cards, then put any number of creature cards milled this way into our hand. Card draws a plus one? Fantastic! Carador Ghost Chieftain is just going to adore her. Her minus one creates a 4-4 green rhino warrior creature token, so we've got protection on that minus ability. That's pretty standard. And finally, her plus two ability is Birthing Pod. Yeah, it's just plus two to Birthing Pod. Sacrifice a creature, tutor up another creature with a mana value equal to one one plus the mana value of sacrificed creature and put it directly on the battlefield? This really makes Vivian on the hunt a beast of a planeswalker. Anything that can tutor a card right into play is extremely powerful and extremely dangerous in Commander. But here, it makes Vivian more resilient to boot. I can easily see Vivian coming down on turn six and effectively ending the game right then and there. Planeswalkers are notoriously fragile in Commander, sure, which is why the best are usually utility pieces. Vivian is a utility piece with an instant win con attached for good measure. And that is why she deserves the top spot on my list of the best cards for Commander from Streets of New Capenna. But now I want to hear from you. What cards for Commander are you looking to pick up for your Commander decks? Let me know in the comments below. And you know what? You can even mention some of your favorite Commanders from the set. I know I'm really excited to play against Lord Xander. I know I'm really excited to build Lord Xander, not because I want to play with Lord Xander, but because I want to build such a degenerate deck that it encourages others to do the same and gets that freaking card banned. But I don't know, maybe you're actually building a commander deck for fun and not to force the rules committee's hands. You do you, but let me know in the comments below. Special thanks once again to Keeps, sponsor of this video. You know, if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com forward slash Tolarian or click the link in the video description to receive 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Tolarian. Thank you, Keeps, for sponsoring this video. Wow, look at how cheap fetch lands are getting. I could really use a bunch for all my Simic Commander decks. Well then get a box of Modern Horizons too. But that's $275. A playset of Missy Rainforests is 120. But the box could have a ton of fetch lands in it. And if you crack all the fetch lands you need and sell everything else in the box, it's like you didn't even pay for them. Yeah, but. It's like you didn't even pay for them. You need anything? I'll He'll take, take a, a box. box. So how many did you get? Two, an Arid Mesa and a Marsh Flats. Well, you can trade those two in for a Misty Rainforest. I need four Misty Rainforests. Better buy another box.